Well, what's up guys? Josh Powell here. You're watching Amateur Pool. We're going to do another pattern play video. This is video number seven of our series. Uh, we've done six other ones. If you like this one, go check out the other ones. Also, don't forget to leave me a like. If you want to uh, uh, get any questions answered, leave a comment. I'll respond. But let's get into this, guys. We're going to do eight ball. I'm going to break them. We're going to figure out the best course of action to run out. Um, you may see it a little different than I do. Remember, I'm an amateur too. We're just doing these videos together, guys. So let's have some fun and talk our way through a wreck. I always break from the side here. I do a second ball break, so I'm shooting straight into the 15 with bottom outside English. In this case, that's right English. Uh, the bottom of the cue ball, just a little bit of bottom though, not a ton. I just want to hit it right here and get the cue ball to go bank, bank. That's all we wanna do. And the cue ball actually makes that noise, guys. The cue ball actually says bank, bank. You know what I mean? Sometimes the cue ball will talk to you. You just gotta listen. All right, let's do it. Oh, 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 where are you going, cue ball? Where are you going? All right, guys, I guess, uh, I guess we could start with ball in hand this time. Let's do it. Let's figure out what we wanna do here. We got ball in hand right off the bat. I don't like the 15, 13, um, but, when you take a second look at it, it's not as bad as it looks because the 13 or the 15 both go on that side. The eight ball is going to be a bit of a problem. Um, if I end up taking solids, I could use either the four and come up this way and break it out or the six and break it out. But if I take solids, guys, these two aren't any fun either. So since we have ball in hand to start, um, now this is, what I'm about to do here is pretty dangerous, guys. Um, you gotta be real careful with your speed and where you hit. But I'm gonna try to make this 13 and just pop this two out a little bit to open up the eight. It's dangerous. The dangerous part is if I hit this two straight, I could push the eight into the pocket. So if I could figure out another way, this is just, I mean, it's just set up too, too beautiful to do it right now though, you know what I mean? I could try to figure out a different way, I suppose, but with ball in hand, this is, um, it's pretty. And I should come away with a shot. There's no guarantees of coming away with a shot. So my objective is to hit there, come up into here and hit this two pretty full. Uh, and it's gonna end up leaving me a tough shot on my next strike. So I better, better think about this pretty good, you know. Wanna make sure that we can come away with a shot. I might go ahead and take either the 13 or the 15 right now and not try to break this out yet. I can always bank this eight ball too. Um, it's a very, very bankable shot. So I don't think I'm gonna take the risk. I'm not gonna take the risk and try to break it out by accidentally making the eight or not getting a shape on my next ball. I'm gonna go ahead and try to run out here and uh, not take that risk of the eight ball. So I'm gonna take stripes though. They still look better to me. I don't like the two ball. Uh, the three, five are kind of ugly. So I like stripes, they're pretty much open. Let's start with them, see what happens. All right, I've got the 15 and if I hit this lightly, I can roll up in here for the 10. Um, from there, depending on if I'm perfectly straight or not, I could either roll forward for the 11 or draw back slightly for the nine. I would prefer to roll forward for the 11 next um, because that way I can get rid of the 11 and bring the cue ball back up table for the nine and 14. Once I shoot the nine, the 14, uh, I need to get up in here, make the 14 in the side, and I need to get the cue ball up in this area for that bank on the eight ball because I'm gonna have to end up banking the eight ball. It's just not too, much, uh, too many ways around it. Let's look at another way here though because I'm, I'm on that nine pretty nice right now too. And I kind of like taking it. The only reason I'm hesitant is because neither the 15 or the 14 will go in this pocket. So I want to get rid of those as quickly as possible. So the right thing to do here, I believe, is to shoot the 15 first. Got to shoot the 15 first. I may even try to use draw and see if I can clip this one and move it out of the way. I don't know if I'll be able to draw it that much or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. And if I miss it, it's fine. The cue ball still comes over here and I'm on the same trajectory I was prior to, to missing it, you know? Let's see what we can do. I could also nick the 15 off the 14. The shot's a lot more difficult, but man, that pushes my 14 down into a much more makeable position as well. 
Guys, I, I, I hate to say it, but I like that shot best, I think. It's a little more dangerous because the shot is missable, but it's gonna make the run out a lot easier because coming back for that 14 in the side is gonna be a little challenging with that one there. And if I make the 15 off the 14 and roll the 14 up a little bit, it's gonna be a whole lot easier. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, guys. I know maybe a little unconventional, but I kinda like it and I feel okay about the shot. Ah, so that was much prettier, much prettier there. Okay, now we got a good looking table here. I think I'm gonna make the 14 with stun. Let me think about it for a second here. Yeah, I'm gonna stun over into here for the um, nine ball or the 10 ball. I'll probably sh like to shoot the 10 ball first because then I can drop on the 11 and finish on the nine which will lead my cue ball back up to the top of the table where I need it to be. Let's try it that way. I kind of like that. So my objective here is to shape the 10. I hit it a little light, so I fell, uh, got too much angle on that 10. Well, more, not too much, more than I wanted. Now it makes this shot, the shot's not that hard, but holding the cue ball for the 11 next is difficult now. So I'm gonna try to put some left spin when I make this. So the cue ball comes down here and it'll die. The left spin will kind of kill it on that rail and the cue ball will come back out this way for the 11. The shot's a little more difficult this way, but it's what I gotta do to run out. It's what we gotta do. Yeah, I didn't hit it hard enough for the left to really take. I laid off my stroke and um, the left spin didn't take off the rail. So um, instead of coming back out this way, I came straight up. Now I've got a tough shot. It's still doable, but I got to use a bridge because I'm over top of the three and the five, which I hate, hate using a bridge, but it is what it is sometimes, you know? The main thing, the main thing I try to do when I'm playing pool, like no matter how bad I mess my shape up or um, you know, get get into a tough spot. I try not to let that part bother me too much. You can't change it. You're already there. You have to take the, sh the difficult shot, so just buck up, you know? Like right here, I could cry about the fact I didn't get where I wanted to, but I, I still have to shoot this shot at the end of the day. So instead of getting upset about it, I just man up and look at the shot and try to take it. Now, shapes on this are a little difficult, though. I'm going to try to put some right spin on this ball so I can come up and shape the nine. Oh, I touched the one a little bit. Oh, I'm hitting balls all over the place, guys. I think I touched the one with the this part and then the five came up and hit this part. Neither of them really affected where, where the balls are ended up, so we're just gonna deal with it, you know? This isn't, uh, we're not playing a league right now, but geez, guys. It goes from bad to worse out of the frying pan into the fire because now I got to cut this nine up table. The fives, I'd like to put right spin and come up this way, two rails for the eight, but the five's in the way to do that. So I either have to put a ton of right spin and come up past the five ball, um, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing, or I could try to put bottom left and come this way around the table. Both shots are extremely difficult. Let me just look at it for a minute and see which one I like best. Both shots are tough, man. Huh, huh. The best bet would have not put myself in this position, you know? You know what I mean? Comment if you agree with that shit. All right, I'm gonna go with bottom left and try to come around this three ball and back up uh, into, I'm going I'm to try to come around the three ball and back up here so I can hook myself on one of these balls. I, I really don't like either way here, guys. Probably the better way is the right spin because if I do the left spin, if I do get around, I'm going straight into this clutter of balls, and there's a good chance I'm going to hook myself. With the right spin, even if I hit the five, I may still see the edge of the eight from here, and I can try to bank it over to there anyway. So I think I'm, I've got to use the right spin here, guys. The left is just stupid. It's an, it makes the shot easier, but it's a, it's a worse way to shape. 
So I gotta use the right. Let's see what I can do. Mm. Missed the shot. That was always it was always a tough shot, you know. But now we got a pretty open table. Let's see if we can run these solids. We got to still deal with that two ball though. That two ball is a pain in the arse. All right, I'm gonna cut the one in. That's obviously my starter shot. It's the best one I got. I'm gonna cut the one in, and I'm gonna try to come down into here. Um, so I'd like to shape that five neck so I can bring the cue ball off this rail and back into the, the two eight and break those up. My goal right now with every shot is trying to lead myself to breaking out that two ball. That's my goal with every shot. Um, make sure this four ball goes here. It does, it's tight, but it goes. All right, let's do it. That might be perfect. That might be just about perfect. Not quite perfect, not quite perfect, but it's doable from here. I'm wondering if I should try it from here though, because I really got to hit it hard. Really got to hit it hard. Because I definitely want to come into the 2.8 off of this rail. I don't want to come into them off of this rail because I could push the 8 in, you know? Um, I've got a good opportunity off the 6 here. I could make it off the 6 and come into them that way. Um, a little harder to come away with the shot this way, but the shot itself and the breakout is much safer and easier. So I'm gonna do that. I think I got it out enough, as long as I don't scratch there. I can make the two here now. All right, now we just gotta be cautious and make our shots. Um, Take what the table gives you. You're like, I fell on that seven ball pretty pretty smooth, so I'm gonna play the seven, right spin, come up for the three or the five, either way. Um, right now, my objective is to get on this two ball still. Even though it's open, it still doesn't go up here. So I wanna figure out how I'm gonna get up here. I could take the four right now, but because the four is so tight on this nine, I don't wanna shoot it from this angle. It's very missable if I shoot it from here. That, which sucks, because that could lead me to the two right now but there's other ways. So let's start with this seven and come up table. Um, we may even land straight on this four right here. I may even go ahead and hit it a little harder and try to get on the two now, but that's risky because if you don't land on that two, the shot, you don't really have a shot from up in here, you know? So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the seven and try to finish up right around in this area. So I can shoot the three, the five or the four, preferably the four to lead myself to the two. Just maybe a tip of right spin on this, not even a full tip. Oh, overran the four a little bit. Dang it. Overran the four, but I got the three. And the three, I think, can take me straight to the two, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. Let me look at the four. I wouldn't be doing myself any justice if I didn't at least look at the four from here. Okay, see, I'm glad I did because it looks a lot better from here. I think I can go ahead and shoot the four now with top and just bounce over into here for the two. Glad I looked at that, guys, because from over there where I was standing before, this looked a lot harder. Um, that's why it's always good to walk around the table and take a look. Let's go ahead and shoot this with straight top. Maybe a little smidge of left, not much. I'm over for the two, perfection, perfection. Now from here, guys, the two looks good. We can just roll forward off the two and we can come down into here and we'll have our choice of either the three or the five. I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. All right, now we can shoot the three or the five. I'm leaning towards the five. Uh, really no rhyme or reason. You can shoot it either way. 
Um, let me assess though, because the five from here kind of has an awkward angle where my cue ball is not gonna easily shape the three. So I'm actually gonna shoot the three first with a little top right and come back this way for the five. I should be able to shape the eight from either way, either ball. A little top right on this one. Get off the rail, that'll work. That'll do, that'll do donkey, that'll do. All right, I've got a slight angle on this one too, man. And never, never make it easy on myself, guys. Um, so I think, I think I can hold it if I use draw with right spin on the cue ball. Instead of cutting it over here, I'll cut it like here and the spin will throw it in and that'll leave my cue ball from drifting too far up. I like that. My other option is to hit it with center real hard and send the cue ball up and back down. I'm gonna get down on it and take a look before I fully commit and decide. Let me see what it looks like from down here. All right, the spin shot is a little touchy to throw it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it firm and I'm gonna um, use the stun shot to go up table and back down. So center ball here, just hit it. You gotta make sure you hit it hard enough to get all the way up and down though. That'll work, that'll work. And that should be all she wrote here, guys. I mean, we had some struggle bus, Ooh, almost missed that eight. We had some struggle bus on the first shot. Uh, we clutched up on the other set. It's a lot easier when, you're, when you uh, miss your run out on the first try because the second set of balls are usually wide open. We had a couple little problems to deal with there, but nothing big. Um, let's do one more rack, guys. That didn't take too long. Let's do one more rack. All right, guys, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get a better break this time. You know, so last time when I broke from here, it didn't spread very well. So I'm gonna break from this side this time. That's a good thing to remember when you're playing a set. If you're breaking your normal break spot or your preferred break spot doesn't work, change locations on the table. Sometimes different tables just break a little different. Um, and if you, you move your cue ball around on the table, you can find the spot that breaks best for you and then you can stick with it. Mmm, that break was even worse, but at least I made a ball, you know? At least I made a ball. Now we're playing open after the break. We're gonna play BCA rules. Not that it matters a whole lot because it's an ugly table and my cue ball's in a tough spot. So we really gotta work to get out on this one. This was a tough, Tough table here, boys. Boys and girls, what's really tough is my starter here, guys. I don't have a whole lot. I can cut that 15 maybe, but I have to shoot it over that six. That may be what I end up having to do because if I shoot that 15, the cue ball is gonna come up and break out the 14, which is also a problem ball. Problem is there's no guarantee I'm gonna come away with a shot there, you know? But what else do I got, guys? That, that nine is literally it's literally about that far off the rail. So I don't know if I can cut it into the side. I might be able to. And if I can, that might be my best shot because then I'll have the 11. I'll be able to break out the 14 and get a shot on the 15. Yeah, I think as much as I don't like it, it's probably my best shot. So let's go ahead and man the F up, shoot that nine ball. And if we miss, we miss. I mean, it is what it is, you know? But this is our best chance, I think, of getting out Yeah, that was a tight one right there, fellas. Fellas and ladies. Now, 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 now. Now we got a nice angle. We can shoot the 11 with top. Bump the four a little. We got to be careful because we don't want to put the four right up onto that 15. So I may want to hit it harder so it doesn't stick to that 15. I just got to get down and see the angle and figure out exactly where I'm going to make contact. Hmm, if I hit it too hard, the cue ball could nick it and then scratch. So I gotta be cautious with this shot here. I've gotta bump it though. I mean, really, if I'm trying to run out here, I've gotta do this shot. There's no other way around it. I think I'm gonna hit it nice and easy though. Um, challenge with that is I may not come away with a good shot after this. Um, 
Man, I've got to though. I've got to do it. If we want to run out, this is what, what we got to do. I opened that 14 up enough, but like I thought, I didn't come away with a great shot here, you know? Uh, that's my, what I was worried about by doing that. I can still cut the 14 in, which is likely what I'm going to have to do. Cut that 14 ball into that corner and be cautious of this scratch. Oh, man. I'm always getting myself out of trouble, guys, I feel like, you know? Always trying to get myself out of trouble. All right, let's make this cut. We're going to use a lot of draw to try to pull ourselves away from that side pocket over there. I'm, I'm afraid if I use stun, I might, I mean, that's a small landing pad. Can you guys see that landing pad? That's the stun angle off it. But if I nick the seven, pocket. If I accidentally put a tiny bit of draw, pocket. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use more draw and try to come up in this way. It's a bigger area. The worry here is if I hit the 10, pocket. So tough shot either way, but I kind of knew coming into that last shot that I may not end up with a good shot here. So we got to buck up and make the shot. That'll work. That actually turned out all right. Now our goal is to try to get down here on the 15. So that's our hardest ball to get on and the eight is gonna be tough as well, guys. We either, we either come over here and bank it or we come up right into here or into here and cut it into that side. But that's gonna be after we get on the 15. Right now we gotta figure out how we're gonna fall on the 15. So I think the, the easy way is just to bump this, come out to about here and make this ball with top left come down on this line here. And if I can get either off angle a little bit or this way would even be perfect. Then I could draw back this way for the eight. But this is a, this is a tough out, guys. This is pretty precision, pretty precise, tough act and ten act in here. So we want to leave ourselves that follow shot from the 12. Oh, without, preferably without missing the 10, you know what I mean? What happens there, guys, is I was worried about getting that correct angle on the 12, and I just didn't focus on actually making the shot. That happens all the time. Happens to me all the time, and I hate it, but it's part of being, a, part of being an amateur. Um, Got to work, keep working on that stuff to get better at it, but until you get there, it is what it is. All right, so let's start with that seven and draw out. Move that uh, six ball a little bit open so we can make it. Now we're on the five. We can make the five with straight top, come back over here for the four, and then we can shoot the three. Well, our attention needs to be on this two ball at this point because it's blocked up here, which means I gotta get up in here to make it down that way. So that's where our attention needs to get to. I can get to it off of this one. If I get a good shape on this one, I can just either come one rail over to it or just draw over to it. Um, but right now I kind of like getting rid of one or two of these balls down here because they're, they're cluttered. Uh, and it makes it easier to shape them if I need to in the future. Always keeping an eye out too if I accidentally fall on something that can get me perfect on the two ball, you know. Just because I have a plan to get to the two ball doesn't mean I should still look for a new plan every time. Like with every shot, if I would have landed here, I would have made this six and followed up for the two just because it would have been too easy, you know. If you land on it nice and easy, take advantage of it. So make the two with straight top and I'm going to come up for the, th or I'm make the four with straight top and come up for the three. All right, now from this three, I can get the angle I need on the one to get to the two, and I can finish on the six with a stop shot, and that leads me to the eight right in the side. So I just gotta be cautious with this shot. This is the important one. So it, it makes sense to walk over and look at my angle that I wanna get. I don't wanna get, here's my shot line, guys. This is my shot line. I wanna be on this side of it. That way I can get over to here. 
If I'm on this side of my shot line, I can still make it work with top off the rail, but then the speed's a lot more precise. So I'd like to be, I'd like to be below this diamond, this diamond line. So a line from this diamond into that ball right here, I wanna be on this side of that line. That's my goal anyway, you know? Gotta have a goal in life. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, a little too much angle, but this should work. Makes the shot a whole lot harder. Too much angle, but this is, I mean, it's natural shape to the tooth now. I just gotta be careful about the speed, you know? You know what I'm talking about, little Timmy. You know about that speed, boy. Oh, <laughs> Well, it is what it is, guys. Is what it is. <sighs> I don't know if you guys saw, I just did a short about this shot right here, off the cue, off the rail, off the one, ticky shot, we call it. So I wanna hit it right there. I'm gonna measure from there down to here. And right here is where I wanna shoot 12, bink, right there, right there. Let's see if we can make that shot. Why not? Let's see if we can make it. Just like that. Pretty self-explanatory here, guys. I just gotta try to get down on that 15. Um, this is actually a very tricky sh uh, shape. Um, the 10's pretty deep in the pocket. If I just hit the side of it and put right, I may hit the one or I may come down towards this pocket. My goal would be to nick here on this rail, hit the 10 and come down this way, but I'm looking at short side shape. So I'm gonna end up shooting the 15 over there if this works out which I'm hoping it does, but you gotta try it. Oh, I came down a lot more shallow than I thought and got perfectly lucky. You know, <laughs> I landed perfect, but it wasn't, it was an accident. I was trying to come over here on this side, guys, because uh, I thought that would be the natural path. Nope, ended up, ended up luckily unlucky. All right, let's shape that eight. Where are we gonna put the eight, guys? I mean, there's a natural path here where the cue ball like comes straight up in between the six, but it's a little tight, and if I don't hit it perfect, uh, I'm in trouble. So what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of top, and I'm gonna send the cue ball up this way, come off of this rail, and out over to here, and then I can shoot the eight in the same corner. I like that. I like it. I hope you guys like it too, because it's really all I'm gonna do. There she is, guys, eight ball, corner pocket. These two racks were real rough, guys, but that's a good thing, right? Because when you're talking through racks, if, the, if it's an easy run out every time, you don't gain as much, right? So when it's a tough rack or you're missing shots, uh, it helps to talk yourself through the rack because realistically, that's how, that's how the majority of us play. We miss, we shape bad, and we gotta figure it out. So I'm gonna make this eight, guys, but I want you to go ahead and hit subscribe, like, Leave me a comment. We'll go from there, guys. Have a great day. Peace.